What is up you guys and of course welcome to our first league battle actually for generation 7 and of course this is in the battle union which of course is going up a lot of Wi-Fi battles up today and I'm going to do a short analysis of my first opponent being of course the Birmingham Spritzies or Alex who has a very very tough team and uh, I having a mentality here going into this battle that that I will try my very best to do well here but this is a matchup that I'm not comfortable with and I'm going to try to just survive it at least in some fashion not get destroyed. Now his overall team here is Rhydon which is okay, they have Tapalele which is mm, thank you, that's that's gonna be great. Doug Kriu, meanwhile Porygon 2, Dragonite, Lantern, Cobalion and Blossom and straight on at it are very clear indication of which Pokemon are the most ferocious here and as you guys see on my screen these are the Pokemon I decided to use. Now here's the thing Tapalele can easily just outrun me and ruin me completely and there is really nothing I can do. If I face off a Scarf Lele then that's gonna be it. There are only so many switch-ins I can do to that until I'm utterly destroyed. But other than that, my Buzz Wall is actually one that looks most solid mainly because it actually can do super effective damage on anything on his team rather easily outside of course that freaking Lantern. So as you guys can see on the page I've been right down there you can see of course my spread. It's not too in-depth this week mainly because I'm actually just got back home from of course France. I'm being yeah bit bit out of time <laughs> when I was doing this. So quick rundown here so of course then I'm trying to somewhere down the line here outmaneuver his offensive and hopefully come about something about it here because the one thing I did kind of recognize or rather was gonna try to embed on against him was that he lacks a proper rapid spinner defogger. Dragonite is his only possible defogger which means that he's kind of susceptible for of course toxic spikes inside of his floaters and of course Cabellion which now will be toxic. So Roselia was super given here and I really needed to get Toxic Spikes up early. So the spread is really, really simple. So Rosalia was the first Pokemon I actually wanted here. So like I stated here, Rosalia is our number one Pokemon here, generally because of all the matchups it could possibly be facing. But here's the thing, it's pretty much the glue that can possibly help me win this game. And it's just one of those prime super defensive variants because it has a Sludge Wave, Giga Rain, and then have a Toxic Spikes and Tasis. Uh, it's defensive enough to check his opponents this is really nicely. Uh, Kobalion can't do super effective damage onto me unless it's somewhere kind of some headbutt set, and even at that, some headbutt is not a super or is not a 50% hit on me. So, the only like main issue here is Lele, and Lele is always an issue, but that's the reason I'm not gonna lead off with Rosalia. I'm kind of staying aware of that because I need Toxic Spikes up early, but I'm expecting a lead such as, of course, Kobalion and anything like that can set up rocks. But if he leads with Lele, my Rusalia is in a very tough spot and I'm pretty much forced to sack something. So that's why Rusalia is so easy to just kind of... I want to throw it in, but not too early. I want to see my opponent plays and just get up spikes. Uh, then I got Excedrill, which of course is with an adamant version with Mold Breaker. And speed enough to outspeed me while... Um, I wanted first to outspeed the Dragonite, uh, being of a Jolly set, but I'm really missing out on proper chaos here. So it's a super easy set. It's not going to do a whole lot. But um, it's one of those Pokemon that could be very useful against like, Lele because it can soak hits versus Lele. And it's, you know, the, the HP and, of course, the extra and special defenses really, really assures me that I'm not being hit for 50% hit of damage, which means I can actually switch this one in against it, even a psychic train. So that's going to be really important. So, X Real, maybe not the most important Pokemon of this match, but it takes on Lele, and Lele is so important to be able to deal with well. Uh, then we have Guard of War with, of course, Trace Choice Cho Uh This is definitely my number one lantern switch in. What I really, really need with this is that this Pokemon can switch in and actually trace the Volt Absorber. I can also trace the Marvel Scale if I can utilize that early. And uh, I have to be timid and, of course, fully speedier here. And the melee is to actually face off against uh, the Dragonite. If he gets up one Dragonite, I can at least. Tie with speed there and actually threaten him off with a Moonblast Psychic. And out of that, I have Trick and Healing Wish. Healing Wish mainly there to actually help Buzzle and or Blastoise or Excadrill if they get whittled down. Gardevoir is only as important as his defensive Pokemon are here to check me. If he isn't playing defensively, then Gardevoir is not necessarily the most important for this matchup. And then we have Magnuson, an analytic modest with Jet Shell. Doug Tree is always going to come in on this one and actually face it off and force it out. So what I needed to do here was having Shed Shell 
basically trying to lure him in with that. Uh, that's the only way I'm going to try to preserve this Pokemon because if not, that's not going to happen, then he's going to win the matchup. Magnuson is important for Lily. Uh, we have Thunderbolt, Volt Switch, Flash Counter, and Hidden Power Grass. I was considering Toxic. But our main focus here is Rosalia to get up Toxic Spike, which means that Toxic will be a bad filler move. Uh, HP Grass is also a bad filler move, but it's at least some of a lantern, and if it's not special defensive, then it can do around 30%. And with Annihilated, that hits the 50% spell, so that's great, since of course Lantern does lack proper recovery. But yeah, Magnuson is only mainly important for, of course, um, <laughs> that freaking Lele. But that Lele can also have hidden power ground, so. It's a double-edged sword, but Magnuszone fits the bar, at least for this matchup, if it's necessary, that is. Uh, then we go, have to go records Bustle. Now, the pace I've been set here that I've been setting is not the one I'm used. Uh, I did optimize for a more specially defensive variant with um, Papaya Berry to be able to actually take a uh, Psychic in, in Psychic Terrain. Uh, it does around 80%. But I am able to soak that and retaliate with a hit that should do around 60-70%. It might sound like a bad idea, but basically after two rounds of Toxic, I should be able to KO it with a Leech Seed so, or a Leech Life. Uh, I'm not carrying Poison Jab here. I was considering it, but really all I need here for Buzzwall is actually a Superpower for the Cobalion and for the Porygon 2. And then we need Ice Punch for Dragonite and then Leech Life to recover. Then we have Roost because he has so many defensive responses which are slow, slower than Buswo. So I really need to focus here on actually being able to being able to recover on the matchup that matters and of course defensively and offensively shake the Pokemon that could take me on because Buswo and possible uh, Fly MC Dragonite is the only things here that actually are offensively shaking me properly. So um, outside of that, Buswo is really really dangerous and I should do anything in my power to kind of preserve this Pokemon well. Uh, meanwhile, could carry Air Lace, and that is a, over a 50% hit. So I can switch in versus Weavile in case he suspects that. But outside of that, the Bustle is super important in this. And it's definitely my primary wall breaker of this matchup, mainly because I know Lantern and Porygon 2 are so hard to break through, but Bustle just eats them, and, and that's great that <laughs> we need that. Uh, <laughs> last Pokemon is Mega Blastoise. And uh, the investment here is 184 in HP, 4 in defense. 164 in special attack, 116 in special defense, and 40 in speed. The speed is here to actually um, outspeed. Um, <laughs> what do you call it? Um, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, the reason here to, is actually to outspeed um, a weird lantern, is what I'm trying to get at. If, if it is a standard lantern, I should be able to outspeed it. I'm not going to max invest here because Lele is the one I need to soak for, and in Psychic Train with Psychic. Uh, Blastoise will take at risk around 50%. It is not given. Uh, our move player is Whirlpool's Ice Beam Aura Sphere. It does hit for at least neutral in, in any matchup we can get. And then we have fillers with, of course, Rapid Spin. Rapid Spin is not important for this matchup. It's just a filler move. I don't, didn't see the reason to carry the likes of Flash Cannon or anything like that. So um, basically, here, Aura Sphere is here to hit. P2, but P2 also, if it isn't a, if it is a special defensive variant, I won't do more than 30%. So definitely should be helpful getting, like I said, the toxic spikes up. So that's the overall theming going on here with my team, and uh, that's the quick roundup basically. And as I say, that next week I will go more in depth, a bit of short on time here. Now the team I was expecting here going into this battle was Tapalele, Doug Trio, Meanwhile, Porygon, Dragonite, and either Lantern or Cabalion. So, really, with all this said, let's see what we are going up against. Alright, transition, hey! So anyway, if you follow up my of course, team analysis, you know, this was pretty much what I, what I was expecting. Now, I do not see Meanwhile here, and I kind of get what I was trying to do. Meanwhile is not necessarily that interesting against me, and, and, and of course, look out the stabs in mind, but when it comes down to this, he doesn't necessarily need all that speed, he can definitely capitalize on the speed and bulk on his own team, since my team is actually quite slow. So, yeah. With that said, I was feeling that either Cobalion or, of course, Tabulel is gonna be the lead, and even Dog Trio to some extent, so Magnuson is gonna be my switching, because I can switch out against Dog Trio with Shedgel. Uh, I can't switch out against Cobalion. And of course, if it is Lele, I can soak a hit and Volt Switch and pretty much bait in the Dug Trio. So I have all the opportunities here to do whatever I like. So yeah, with all I said, 
let's see how this battle went because it's a freaking team with Tapu Lele. That's that's always great. So right from the get down, we will see Kubilion coming out here. So that's okay. The only thing I'm gonna do here is throw in my Urselia. I really want to see rocks and basically get my free toxic spikes up and then try to figure out things from there. And I really mean that. There are only so many things I can do. Now he does go for close combat, the aggressive play. Which is okay by me because we do soak it and I stated it's something that Rosella will be able to do against Cobalion. It is not a threat as long as I keep this Pokemon active. Now he does Volt Switch here and I was feeling that it's very likely Lele comes in here and you know that's that's gonna be great. But we are a bit lucky here. He switches in of course Dragonite. And the reason I'm lucky here is because I can throw in my God of War and actually capitalize on his Marvel scale and that's exactly what I was gonna do. I do expect him to actually go for Dragon Dance here, though I do am a bit frightful for he would attack me. Uh, so we're going to trace, of course, a multi skills. That's not a skills, my bad. Uh, so he goes for Dragon Dance, and as we go, right? It's, it's okay. It's okay. You know, like I said, I do expect him to have Fly MC here, and he's not going to waste it. He definitely needs it for the um, <laughs> for the bus wall. So Porygon 2 comes in, and he's going to trace my of course multi scales so that's you know we have some nice tracing going on here we're passing down the abilities one another as moonblast will do just about nope that's um and it's kind of hard to distinguish whether or not it's a special defensive variant because of course of the marvel scale in mind but basically i'm not gonna stay and i'm not gonna take any possible thunder wave or anything like that i'm gonna bring in leia uh, which of course is my Roselia as it brings in this closure and I'm going to do a blind play here. I really feel it's going to Volt Script against me. Um, so I did go for a Synthesis here, basically trying to soak or trying to scout him. But he actually go for Self Rod, which is fine. Because this basically means that, right, he did that, he doesn't have a Super Effective Damage, he hits me. I'm going to go for Sludge Bomb this time. And basically hope that it, that plays pays off. I do not go for Giga Rain. Uh, I really, really was hoping that he's going to try to offensively shake me with Lele. And... Uh, he switched in Lele. The thing is, it's kind of a blind play. He might as well have been staying in here and actually keeping going, since my stab is not hitting him super effectively. But it did decide to offensively try to shake me, and this Sludge Bomb does so much damage. It's it's definitely up there. That's definitely Lele in a very, very tough spot. So all I need to do now is bring in my Magnuson, trying to soak any hit that comes my way. And I say try, because this thing, thing is freaking life orb. So my bustle was Papaya Bear for this battle. He would not have saved me from any life or extra damage with, of course, uh, the Psychic in mind. I would not be able to take that with my berry. So that's excellent prep on Alex's part. Sadly, he loses Lily very, very early. And yes, my Magnuson is whittled down. But somewhere down the line, I do believe that's a very, very fair trade-off. I don't care about the crit that much. It's still a 2 hit KO. So anyway, I do have the Shed Shell. I can definitely capitalize on that and switching out to Gohot. Which of course is my boss wall, who is now his number one threat to be dealing with. Now he did go for Sucker Punch there, definitely is expecting me to be Scarfed. So that's a very fair play, as uh, he's gonna switch out and go to Porygon 2. Now I do believe I went for a Leech Slime here, I was definitely, yeah, trying to get some recovery. As we do push him down a little bit here, and after Toxic Damage I'm feeling, you know, this is, this is my chance. This is my chance to go for a Super Power and just nullify <laughs> the Porygon. So that's what I'm gonna do. Uh, I was feeling it might, he could be switching out to Dragonite and that would have been unfortunate but it doesn't do that which means that I do remain on my attack as uh, Dragonite is definitely gonna come in now trying to capitalize on my lost defenses and I know he has to set up. He definitely needs to set up. So I'm gonna take a risk and go for an Ice Punch here basically breaking his multi-scale as we see the Dragon. I was like oh thank god that <laughs> it paid off. <laughs> so, yeah, that could have been a dumb play, actually. You know, I definitely, like I said, I'm expecting that Fly MC to kick in. So Ice Punch is close of killing him. Like I said, the multi scale is saving him after all. As uh, so now I'm expecting the Fly MC to kick in. So I'm gonna send in Dynamos basically to soak that hit or you know doing that risky place. But it actually goes with Dragon Claw, and I thought this was very strange. Um, then again, you know, with the loss of defense, it, it kind of was fair. So anyway, I'm gonna go with Alyssa here, I'm trying to actually shake him here, as uh, this was probably dumb, because I'm actually taking a very big risk here, because he wins this speed high, and goes for an earthquake. We do not see uh, any kind of flying move here, but that will knock out my Alyssa, and that's bad. 
I don't know why I was making a problem with Adamant, but that was a very, very dumb place. Since, of course, my Blastoise, my WD Gaster, is very, very capable of taking a plus one here. I was so fearing that, you know, here comes the Fly MC. But no, he switches out and goes to Lantern. And here I was feeling, hmm, that's, that's so strange. I didn't necessarily re reflect on it back then, but I was so, so much thinking, you know, that... <laughs> It's gotta go down, right? Uh, that flying C has to kick in somewhere. Uh, now, Ice Beam clear doesn't do any damage here, and I was basically feeling he's gonna go for a Volt Switch here, so I can easily, easily uh, catch him off guard here and sit in my extra drill and try to force him out. That is not what happens. He goes for a Skull here, and I was like, oh dear lord, I I'm not getting these predictions right. As I do realize, if I go for Nerdquake here, I let the Dragonite set up again. So I'm actually going to go for Stealth Rocks, thinking that, you know, it was the Dragonite was swiddled down. It's definitely 25% area. I am much better off actually sacking, of course, my Excadrill and, and sending up, of course, Rocks actually actively killing the Dragonite. So I do believe that's a very, very fair trade because that means, alright, you know, we probably got this in the bag now. I really don't see a reason. Dragonite could become a possible threat for me whatsoever at this point, which is awesome because that's mean the bustle is just gonna do its thing, and I like that thing. But I'm gonna actually send in Leia my Roselia here, mainly because I wanted to actually just get the damage going. As uh, we will, of course, a Volt Switch, and I do believe that's a very, very <laughs> active play here. I was kind of feeling Ice Beam could have been a thing here, but we do avoid that as Disclosure comes in, of course, in case it could be Elyon. Now, I don't necessarily know what went through my head necessarily because the Giga Rain does do an okay amount of damage, I should say. I mean, I'm like I said, I'm very, very defensive, and I kind of realize I am defensively checking him here without any necessary problem because Iron Head does do around 30% on me. Giga Rain kind of helps me with another 20 HP, and I realize that you know I could probably carry Roselia through and through this the, the remaining matchup without necessarily need to worry. Uh, as I go for synthesis here, but I realize it's a risky play. It can definitely take a long time, and I could get flinched, which means I could be I could be forced in a bad spot. So realizing this, um, I do believe I actually tried to get myself fully recovered before I actually switch out. I can actually bring in Buswall here, and the reason Buswall makes so much sense is because it's it's actively checking everything here. Uh, Kobelo can touch it. Lantern is not necessarily outspeeding it. And with, of course, his high HP, I do recover a lot with Leech Life. Dragonite is gone, but of course, the Stellar Prox and Doug Trio can't touch me. So, having that in mind, the Iron Head here does do a lot of damage on me, and I kind of expect him to Volt Switch out. So, I'm just going to go for Rooster. I do believe that series of play makes the most sense for me. I want to be in a good spot as, of course, Doug Trio come in. So, now I'm locked in. Uh, but, you know, we know exactly who is locked in with you. I'm not trapped here with with him, he is trapped here with me, that's that's how this goes down, as Leech Light would just eradicate this Pokemon. Now, he doesn't have real Ace, which I was a bit surprised about, but Stone Edge is just as fair as it actually does a pretty decent amount of damage on me, but Leech Light will just kind of, you know, help me come back, that's... I mean, there is just... Dugtree is so fragile and Buzzle is so actively offensive that it's it's not even funny. As um, his next switch in here is actually Lantern, I definitely felt that he was trying to actively get the Skull Burn, anything to to kind of help him come back here to some extent. As the Skull will actually do a lot of damage, definitely showing me it's a more offensive variant of, of course, Lantern. But due to actually the pinata that is Lantern HP, I'm basically getting most of it back, and uh, with another speed boost, I'm getting actively stronger. So at this point, I felt that you know this 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 game is basically a wrap. I just need to go super power against Gabelion, and then I win because I stated due to self rocks the Dragonite is gone. So yeah, I mean, what else can I say to kind of feel this? I I I, I was I'm beating a team with a type of Lele, which I definitely wasn't feeling. I definitely felt that <laughs> that this was a team I was not going to be able to physically check that well. But a, a few good predictions and a few good series of play, and basically here we are. So Dragonite's gonna come in, and of course, as stated, it's gonna die to the... No... No, it actually survives. And due to, of course, me going for super power, my bustle will fall to a crit. Though I don't think that crit matter whatsoever, 
Uh, I'll actually send him my Leia here. Basically, that was a dumb play. Because he could have roost. He doesn't have roost, luckily for me, I should say. Blasters would have been a much more sensible play of me of playing. I don't know why I did that. Luckily, as I said here, he didn't have roost. Because if he had roost, he would have won. I messed up big time there at the end. So yeah, I really just want to showcase that last situation. I was so sure those stealth rock was going to kill him. And Dragonite surviving was a very, very evil part. Because like I said here, I was really, really... Right into the very end, I was feeling, no, he's going to be flying. See, I do find out later he was Dragon played and actually had Aqua Jet over Roost to be able to actually kill my Excavator in a Sand Rush. So, me actually not trying to match up with his Dragonite actually kind of makes sense. Or uh, it did pay off, even though it not necessarily what I was thinking. But yeah, you know, outside of that, I do believe we both do a bit of a few strange plays here. Uh, the Temple Ellis switching, of course, on my opponent's side. Uh, I do believe that really, really pays off for me being able to offensively shake him more naturally. Because Lele just wins this game, and I feel uh, that my blind kind of prediction paid off. But I will call it that. It is a blind prediction, and it's even if it does pay off, it's it's not a masterful play. It was I was feeling it's very likely would switch it in, but I had I had no idea. And I'm not gonna try to waver around anything else like that. It's a dumb play going for a immune hit against another Pokemon. That that's not gonna be avoided off. But I think I do a few strange play on my own, and definitely the ones that doesn't make a whole lot of sense is me sitting in God of War against the, the Dragonite when I had a Mega Blast and could take that hit. And uh, it was no reason me doing so because Lantern got a bit more strange to deal with, and uh, also the extra switching against Lantern. Didn't necessarily need to do that, Rosselli was still a very solid overall switching. And I think that play kind of dumbed me down a little bit. Yes, I did get Stealth Rocks up, but that was not my initial idea. My initial idea was logging in here for Earthquake. But I realized that once I did that, that, you know, Dragon is going to come in. That's uh, that's not going to go away. So I, that was a strange series of play, and I'm not going to try to say that, you know, I'm a worthy winner or anything like that for this battle. I do believe we both do a bit of, you know, a bit of hiccups on both sides. Uh, even if I do come out on top, I do believe this battle is going to turn any other way. Had it been a Roost Dragonite, uh, he would have won this game because I switched into the wrong Pokemon for that matchup. As I stated, I was so sure I was going to be expecting Fly MC, and somewhere down the line, I kind of just got a hiccup with everything. And I got a really stressed because Bustle could easily have matched up with that Dragonite. I could, I was not forced to go for Superpower. That Superpower play was really dumb because, of course, I lost my defenses because he didn't have a Fly move. And I should cut on that Dragonite never came in against the bus hole, not necessarily if it wasn't forced to, and I was just, I was definitely, I think I was my own worst enemy at that part. But Alex, thank you so much for this battle, and thank you for you guys for watching, I hope you enjoyed this game, even though it was a bit of a those strange one. We are new to this concept, it's gonna showcase on every battle, I'm sure. And I'm not gonna say that this game is a, a fair one game. Like I said, a blind prediction really helped out here, and I do believe our hiccups play kinda is showcased throughout this game. We're both new to this, and you know, we will both get stronger. Alex is a tremendous battler, and he has a lot more to show, and so have I. So, thank you so much for watching, guys, and I'll see you next week against Durham Dragons and Leo, or Six Feet Hacks. That's gonna be an easy match. You hear me, Leo? I'm ready for ya. So, anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next video. Until then, of course, take care. Bye.